This is Gordon Pepper, and welcome to this month's UBA Heavyweight title match. We have our champion here, Mr. Keith Perry. Hello, Keith. Hello, Gordon. How are you? I'm okay. Now, you've defended a number of times, so this is the first time I actually get to commentate on your match. Correct. I'm so, glad you guys are here. I'm glad that I'm here. Now, the question is, will you be glad that I'm here after the match? Because your opponent is somebody that's probably a little bit familiar to you. His name is Jonathan Dansbury. I'm assuming that you've heard of him. Don't know who he is. Don't know who he is. Yeah, he doesn't know who you are. That might be a good thing after this match is done. He might not want to know who I am. Ooh. So talk to me a little bit about this guy, because I think you know this guy more than he says that he knows you. Well, here's what I do remember. He gave me a nice uh, ass whooping last time we bowled in his backyard. Um, I think it's time I return the favor here. You know, it's my backyard, my turn. Any thoughts on that? He must not have learned from Valdez's lesson last month when I beat him in his own house. So, home house don't matter to me, sir. Even though I'll say it'll be very impressive uh, if you do lose in your home house to this guy who likes to beat people in their home houses, apparently. Don't matter. Let's see what he's got. Let's see what he's got. Any final thoughts, Sam? No, he don't stand a chance. So. It's going to be a nice and easy, quick match. Save him some money on lineage. Let's say it's your own house. Maybe you get a lineage discount. Lineage discount? Well, for this guy? Well, lineage discount for this guy? Maybe, yeah, maybe if we go three. All right, I wish you guys the best of luck. Come out. Shake hands. Let's go. This is Gordon Pepper, and welcome to the Underground Bowling Association's Heavyweight Championship match. It's April 2023. Your champion is Keith Perry, and he will be defending against somebody that is very familiar to all those that are in the World Championship Series. His name is Jonathan Dansbury. I am joined by one Ducky Russell. Hello, Ducky. Good afternoon, sir. How are you? I'm okay. Ducky is the special guest commentator. Last time that we had this, Ducky uh, hung out with me and we chatted for Garden Foundation versus Murder Inc. That was a fun little match. Yeah, that was great. I mean, uh, Murder Inc. came out full swing in the beginning, but in true Garden Foundation factor, they came in in the end. Pause. Yeah, Garden Foundation won. Now, the reason why Ducky this time around is guest commentator is this time around, you know, last time around he was wearing a UBA jersey, a broadcaster, he still is, but he also has a specific affiliation with somebody in this match. Do tell. Well, I'm on syndicate with Keith Perry. I've um, been helping Keith for the last couple of weeks sit there and get everything going on. Um, he did a couple of hiccups throughout the last couple of times that him out, but last night he got his stuff together, um, beat me for high average for the league, which I'm not happy about that, but I mean, <laughs> that's, a, that's for another conversation. We'll handle that later. But I know, I feel as though um, everybody's here to sit there and support and love and show. So uh, yeah, let's see what happens. All right, uh, champion has decided he is going to go first. For everybody that is just tuned in, this is a best of seven matchup. Whoever gets to four games first wins. If Keith Perry does, he will hold on to the title. If Jonathan Dansbury does, it will be his first heavyweight championship and his first singles title. It will not be his first title. He has won the tag team belts before with Troy Gafkin. Troy carried him to the match oh, twice. Troy right. carried him both times in the tag team match. Two times. We done seen we done seen a lot of things between Danbury and, and, and Troy. It was a great time, but I don't think Dansbury can sit there and do, is finish the job. All right, Keith Perry's got to start. He's got to start with the strike. And here, here we go. Now, now uh, Jennifer Schwartz, the lovely Jennifer Schwartz, has said he he knows how to carry everybody to the buffet. That can be described to either bowler right now in this match. Yes. Well, usually when... Or either commentator for that matter as well. Yeah, yeah. Usually when, when Dansbury and I step foot in the same vicinity, we usually go to uh, Reduzio's um, Steakhouse, Brazilian. Um, I thought we were going to do it today, but by the time this match may or may not get done, Reduzio's would not be ready for us, so we might have to reschedule that one. The match started a little later than normal. Reduzio's will be out of stock by the time... They, they will be, or if they won't, by the time you get there, they will be. Yes, sir. Definitely after you're done, they will be. No, Dansbury starting up first. Dansbury, a.k.a. Dingle. So the Dark Dingle shows up, and the Dark Dingle gets a strike. Keith Perry's UBA nickname, by the way, Spray and Pray. And right now, Jonathan is praying for another strike here for double. 
Meanwhile, while that's going on, I would just like to remind everybody, welcome to the UBA, that is for the Underground Bowling Association. This is the World Championship Series. The WCS is divided into two regions, the Northeast, which is basically, I would say, Virginia and up, and then the Southeast, which is everything under that. In a couple of months, Battle Bowl will be happening, and whoever is the North title holder at that point will be going up against whoever is the Southeast title holder. And they're going to be competing for potentially thousands of dollars. That is in a couple of months. And right now with April, there's not many more matches that you have to do to defend the title. So if you win now, maybe have one or two more matches, and then you get to go down with the belt. Jonathan's going down with another strike, too, for Jonathan. And now the spraying, and the spraying must be done on Keith Perry's part. Dansbury is praying and talking to himself already because, I mean, this is his house. I mean, that, I do not know why they, they came here, but I understand why they came here. But Dansbury is going to sit there and, and, and collapse like a normal house rat does. Well, I was going to say, I'm not sure you can consider it just Jonathan Dansbury's house. They both have both league here. No. So they're both familiar with this house. I believe he does. Okay. This is a 45 minute drive for us. This is not, he goes in a Bolero. Atta girl. He goes in a Bolero type of atmosphere and stuff like that, but I mean, we have tour stops and stuff, but no. Well, if you have um, tour stops here, then you should be very familiar with the lame set, wouldn't you think? No. Well, somebody who does it week in, week out is way better than somebody who comes in here once or twice in a 12-week span. Okay, we'll find out. So far right now, you couldn't tell both bullers on strikes are going into the third frame. I would, I would like to know how they, went, how they fused out earlier. Like, what was their first games earlier? Because, I mean... First game is going to be fresh. The lane's be sitting for a while. Um, the favor is going to come to whoever's going to carry more or faster. Whoever's going to get the tap, yes, baby! So therefore, at, at the end of the day, I still feel as though Dingle has the favor in, in oh, Dingle's taking a re-rack. See if he knows the house, he's taking a re-rack. See, exactly. I mean, he saw something down there that nobody else saw, and I hope he goes stone like something here just because. Stone, 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 <laughs> like, stone anything. Any part of back row bingo. Like, stone anything. Like, it, it, like the, the one something. pin wasn't that far off. Like, I mean, I, I still would have just shot it. That's why I just do it. You might have saw a ring in 10. But this shot looks a little better. By the way, Ducky knows what he's talking about. He has held he has held the Northeast Heavyweight title before. Yeah, but that was... Uh, he's still going to do it again. That was a, Eventually. That was a fluke of somebody missing a baby split. Ah, flukes are flukes. And that, well, that's... He threw the ball like garbage because he was worried about the cycle. That was the stone two, the stone four, the stone five, and the stone seven. That was like the that's a combination of stone something. Yeah, like, excuse me, sir, you let for God with the two, four, five. Like, I mean, I, and just a whole lot of, yeah. So basically, it's the Rolling Stones up there. Got four members. Yes. By, by the way, con that's a great play on words. It is. It is. Condo <laughs> condolences, by the way. I believe one of the Rolling Stones members has passed away this uh, this weekend. So condolences there. Not exactly the biggest Rolling Stone fan in the world, but uh, you know, right now, John Jonathan Dansbury is looking for this ball to not jump in Jack Flash, and it will not. He'll make the spare. Yes. I'm away. good with dad jokes. I stepped, I stepped away because I was going to sit there and say something. Because if he would have, not me, but I had all week. If he would have, if he would have chopped, uh, we would have had a very loud ducky saying some things that maybe would not be appropriate for this microphone. Game one, game one, I'm going to keep it quiet. Game two, we'll sit there and start feeling out the real world, and then that's where you'll start seeing the members that are here to support each other. Yeah, you, usually beginning, nobody really says much at the beginning. It gets crazier and crazier as the match goes on, especially if someone's on the break of winning or losing, depending on which side you're talking about. Dansbury right now looking to get back on the strike train, and he does. So a little, little bit of chattering from the Dansbury group. Not really that much yet. However, right now, Keith Perry's got a little bit of a lead. He's up, mathematically, he's up by 14. He could be up by 24 with a strike at this moment. There's a lot more people here than I thought. Yeah, you're, you're, we got a crowd. We got a crowd. Other bowlers from league just not getting done, coming over here and support the the UBA uh, culture, bringing in the noise that we need for the for the streamers. Actually, not streamers, viewers. Oh, viewers, streamers. Speaking of streaming, stream the big four right there. I should say four in a row, not the big four. Big four is something different. 
Perry right now with the front four going into the fifth frame. Dansbury right now, three strikes to despair. However, there is no defense to a 300 if that is exactly what we will be seeing. You can do defense and shoot in a 300? Said there's there's no defense to a 300. There's never do defense in bowling. I mean, only way defense in bowling is throwing a urethane ball. Or you go in a lefty and you just mess up their left side for them before in practice. Oh, you could do that. Shout out, hashtag, I mean, PAV. PAV. Right now, Keith Perry is looking for five. Oh, well, that, that's not five. <laughs> that's three, four, six, seven. Dansbury is being yelled at to get his head in the game. All of a sudden, we have people that are shouting right now for Dansbury, even though you probably couldn't tell that they're shouting for Dansbury. Like I said, Tough love. There was, there was, there's more people here that I didn't think was going to sit there be cheering, but it's good. Absolutely, it's good. However, it's not good. Seven two split for Perry. One fifteen in the fifth frame. Dansbury with a strike can go up eleven, but he's got to get two strikes to get to that point. And first things first, he's got to start on the lane that he left a whole bunch of pins on last time out. So we're gonna see what's gonna happen here. Dansbury up, ready to go. Here's the shot coming out. That ball, did he make the adjustment? No, he did not. Well, he's got four pins now, but on the right-hand side instead of the left-hand side. Three, six, nine, ten. Yeah, he, he said it already, but he's not by a microphone. So, so Jonathan right now will, if he makes a spare, he'll take partial advantage. He'll cut, the, cut it down to under a ten-pin game. Not the easy spare in the world to make for a righty. Lefty much easier, but not for a righty. And we'll see right now what Mr. Dingle does. Dansbury's throwing the ball right now. Ball looks like it'll hook, and it does. It looks good up there. John's talking about it. It does look good up there right, right now, theoretically, assuming Dansbury gets a strike here. It's a nine-pin game. So everybody's uh, everybody's going, ooh, Dansbury spares. However, he's clean right now. Keith Perry, not clean. He's gotten open. That's the reason why he hasn't blown this game open yet. Perry right now looking around, trying to figure out what he's going to do. Dansbury on lane 11. So far on this lane, he's had nothing but strikes. We shall see if that continues momentarily. And... Colette said you jinxed him, Gordon. Yes, I did. And oh my goodness! Ah, uh, that's that, that's. I don't know if anybody should be proud about that one. That was it. That's the blatant definition of a, of a domino strike right there. Everything falling down bit by bit by bit. Yipes! And I'm not sure if Ducky even wants to comment on that. <laughs> yeah, nope. That that would be around it. So Dansbury right now, the strike in the sixth frame does mean that Perry does need to throw a strike here if he wants to maintain the lead in the sixth frame. If he does not, he risks being down by one. We're going into the second half of game one. Uh, thank you for everybody joining up here. Colette, you don't have to be good, just lucky. That's very true. Keith, right now, that's good. There's a strike over there right now. Still a nine-pin game. Perry up as we go into the seventh frame. Joe Pags, let's go Keith. Colette, yes, I, I did jinx him. Uh, MTV Unleashed, and I know who you are. Hi, Mark, what's the count? Uh, actually, it's MT Unleashed TV. Okay, count right now, we just started, so you missed nothing at this point. Right now, count zero, zero. Jonathan Dansbury trailing by nine. Keith Perry right now in the seventh frame. On lane 11, this is the lane that just gave him problems leading the four, the six, and the seven. Let's see if he figured it out. If he does, he will maintain his lead. If he does not, then Dansbury has got a shot to take the lead. Whoa, that eight pin just went down. Almost a stone eight for your guy, but everything goes down. Perry's maintaining the lead. So on the last shot, Dingle, he floated it out. He got the little lucky push back. Everything fell. I do not see that the carry for Dingle after the first six frames is going to sit there and keep continue falling to his play because his angle is a little too off. If he squares up a little bit more, he might be decent to sit there and go to length. 
where Keith has the speed behind the ball, if he just doesn't get into his head, it's going to be maybe a seven game. Well, Dansbury right now has got to figure out on the 12 what Keith just did in 11. And Dansbury does. Strike over there. Still a nine-pin game. Going in the eighth frame. Perry up by nine. Dansbury pressing. At this point, if Keith Perry goes out the door, it is a two. See my math's right here. 265. Dansbury goes out for 256. So nice, strong game to start off here. This is fun. We're just getting started. Like, we're literally seven frames in, and it's just getting started. Just getting started. Both bowlers have figured the lanes out early. So the question is, can Keith go out the door? If he does, he's going to win. If he makes a mistake, can, does, is Dansbury close enough to catch him? This is the question here. Going to the eighth frame. Here's Dansbury coming up. That ball's got to check up. And it says, no, oh boy, does it check up. It's, it's makeable, it's three, six, 10, however, and a big however here. Keith in the eighth and ninth can put Dansbury away. Uh, like, I don't, like, I don't like neither, neither, neither one right now, like. <laughs> they're, they're both, both looking throwing, okay, but they're both looking a little shaky. Yeah, like, they're both throwing the ball well. Like, I'm not discouraging anything, but the lane transition for me, if I'm seeing anything, which I don't really see anything much. Uh-oh, ball's got to come back. Bye-bye, Miss American Pie. Oh, my goodness. Bye-bye, Miss American Pie, just a bit outside, or attack of the gutter monster, whichever way you want to call it. It all means the same thing. Ball does not hook from the great channel. And, and we get the first part of the mic, megaphone. By here in, in the UBA, everything's legal, including megaphones. Oh, man. I had my whistles. I had my megaphone. We have a cowbell. We have clappers. Too much cowbell. We have, yes, a, we have a WCS champion. What don't we got? Right, that's true. We got a lot of wins and tour stops. That's what we don't got. Well, yeah, you don't have wins and tour stops right now. But but right now you got a champion with the belt. Champion right now, three in a row, Keith Perry. Ninth frame right now. I mean, pretty much mathematically, this could be over in the ninth frame. If Dan Sperry goes out, it's a 217. Perry with another strike here. We'll have a 205 going into the tenth frame, and then he will just need to not do what Jonathan Dansbury just did in his fill shot. Dansbury is still the house. Like, the house always wins. Keith just has to sit there and just act like this is practice. Oh, and late 10 pin, and right now it's practice. It's, it's now practice time in the 10th frame for Keith. There's nobody here, there's nobody here, it's just practice. And in the words of Keon Phillip, this, I'm not sure about if the match is over yet, Keon, but the game is definitely over. This game is a wrap, and Bobby, you're right, gray boards do not hook. Biting off the comments, yeah, that, I mean, that's a great one. <laughs> Like gray boards don't gray hook. Gray boards, the blue boards, the red boards, no matter whatever color that's not a actual looking type of wood color, <laughs> don't throw it there. Gutter, the gutter monster is there and he eats balls. Pause. Bowling balls. Pause. Dansbury right now is trying to look for something here for the next game. Well, lane 12 has not been the issue. The Well, lane 12, he had a couple of issues, but lane 11 now he's got to figure out because that last shot, yeek. So, so again, even though he did throw a strike there, this, this game is over. Keith Perry's going to go up 1-0, assuming again that he doesn't double gut or do any other silliness or have a purple rhinoceros come in or anything like that. We've seen worse. We have seen worse. Like, Haven't seen a purple rhinoceros, though. I mean, that would be, that, I mean, a horse of a different color. I mean, we've seen that, but Keith going double gutter, like, I mean, like, throwing one because he's trying to maybe go right on the next one just because he already knows he already has a game. Maybe. Yeah, how, yeah. And now, now this pins go down for Dansbury over here. They really needed him to go down in the eighth frame. He just threw a purple hammer and went jersey. A purple hammer and a purple jersey. Already? He, he can't quit already. No. It's not quitting already. Just by the, the body lingo and everything like that, like, he, he's not happy. We have to get happy Dansbury. Happy Dansbury wins. This Dansbury right here, right here, he bowled earlier. He feels like a little sluggish. And something has to. Like, yeah, we have dark Dansbury right now. Yeah, he has to sit there and find like the beginning. He was okay, and then he just fizzled out. Dark Dansbury right now leaves a wiggling. What is that? An eight pin? Eight pin or four pin? Maybe a four pin. 
But it doesn't matter now. Now Keith can just do whatever at this moment. Sorry? You said you were missing a ninth thing. So Ducky right now, we don't know if he's missing a nine pin. Doesn't really matter if he was missing a nine pin or not. Unless Keith decides to Yeah, okay, so doing a re-rack. Doing a re-rack changing the score. I don't know. We'll look at the camera footage later on and uh we'll see if it we'll see if it really is or isn't. Yes. But yeah, the game like I said, the game's already over, so it really doesn't matter. Physically. Does not matter. But just for emotional status, he might have wanted just to see if the strike uh, you know, the, you you are going to try to figure out, and it's one of the things that you said. He threw a purple rhino. He's now made those some other equipment. He's got an extra ball to try to figure out what he wants to do. It looks, it looks rhinoish. Yeah. So it's oh, sorry, purple hammer. <laughs> I'm saying a purple rhinoceros because it could be coming in at this point. Whoa. I was going to say I'm not really sure what the point of that was. If he was going to just go and do that, but. He, he did. Again, not that it matters. It, it, don't. It doesn't. Um, Dingle is like again. We have to get happy Dingle. He doesn't drink. How, what do, how do you how do you poke the bear without poking the bear? I don't drink, and I'm just fine. I'm happy Pepper. Yeah, but you put a little salt in your pepper, you get a little frustrated. <laughs> Pepper sometimes can get spicy. We can have a spicy pepper. <laughs> Looks like he'll make the spare. So Dansbury will make the spare, and Keith needs one pin. Actually, Keith doesn't need any pins, and it doesn't matter. So another one from Keith Perry. Right now, that's five in a row. Seven in a row will give him that 265 that we were discussing earlier. So thanks, Bobby. Seven pin. Again, not that it really matters at this point. So, or I'm sorry, I call it. Yes, this is the best of seven, and we are at the end of game one. It's all over but the shouting, in this case, the megaphone. Maybe. Soon. Megaphone is not coming out anytime soon. I mean, I might, it, it might be getting, it might get a little, like, for somebody else, but, I mean... Right now, he's just sitting there reserving his batteries. Megaphone's just hanging out, going, nah, I'm chill. Yeah, yeah. Got a chill megaphone. So, right, and right now, uh, that was a spray and pray shot from Keith Perry. And he did spray. Uh, no praying was needed yet. We may be needing prayer later, but right now, we're pretty good, and this game is pretty much all done. One more shot here before we go into game two. Jonathan Dansbury will start because Keith Perry started game one. Perry right now looking to finish off. Is that a ball change there? That looked like a ball change. And right now what needs to change is Mr. Dansbury scoring because at the end of game one, Keith Perry 265, Jonathan Dansbury 203. The champ leads one game to nothing. Jonathan Dansbury will start game two. And Ducky right now is pulling out. I thought you were gonna be pulling out and then make a fun. You're not, you're pulling out of water. Nice water. You gotta stay hydrated. Absolutely, I got two down here. Know exactly what you're talking about. Right now, we're, we're getting a little crowd here behind us as people are starting to fall in a little bit. We got a bunch of people. We got a bunch of people here on this. Hello. At the end of this game, we will be doing one Gordon Pepper trivia question, maybe two eventually, but we're going to start with one. We do have a $25 gift certificate, and I will even give you the category for the first question. Because, you know, one of the things that we were talking about is Michael Mortel and the, ran, the run that he had. So this is going to be UBA and the PBA. That is your theme of the question. So now start thinking about that. What UBA bowlers have done stuff in the PBA? There's been a bunch. There has been a bunch. More than you think. That's done that. So that cherry will be coming out momentarily after game two. But right now, let's start game two. Dansbury starts this one. He is down one zip to the champ, Keith Perry. And right now, we're chatting over here. Got a little commotion going around. Motion's good. Keith Perry right now is talking with Ducky. That's why he's not coming over here. Dansbury starting up right now. That first ball looks a little tight. And it's good. First strike right out of the gate for Jonathan Dansbury. Uh, both bowlers started out game one with a double, and then it got a little lopsided for Dansbury at that point when Keith continued to strike and Jonathan didn't. Perry right now is up. Let's see what he does in his first frame. He's chatting with Ducky right now. 
Now, they're not, not just talking about what we're doing with the megaphone. He's actually talking a little strategy, I believe, if I think correctly. Would that be correct? Are you talking a little bullying strategy at this point? He just asked if he should do something, and I told him, no, stay right where he is. We'll, we'll let Dingle make the move for us. Some, sometimes just a minor adjustment or not even make an adjustment. Sometimes you just do a bad shot, and you just got to throw a good shot and not... That's what he's doing right now. Dingle's going to make the, the adjustment where he wants to make it. If okay. Dingle goes face, we could stay there and stay right. Or we make the jump sooner, giving Dingle the eye. All right, now that, that adjustment, or not adjustment, looks very good. Perry only made one mistake. That was in game one. He had an open in the fifth frame, but it was smooth sailing before smooth sailing after. He's looking to continue on the smooth sailing ship here. Perry right now and Dansbury all even at a strike apiece as we go into the second frame. Hi, Mia. Hey, got Mia Williams. Also from the, uh, well, not from the PA North, she's from the AC Express. Right now, they are leading their district, the AC Express, in New Jersey South. Former, former Vixen champion. Former Vixen, a two time former Vixen champion. And oh, well, there's the 10 pin. That's what, that's what he was just asking. He sat there and said, one lane is a little eh. Should he sit there and make an adjustment? But I said, you just continue striking. If you go flat 10, then you make that adjustment. He struck over here, cool. Go back onto the weaker side. He went flat 10, so now he's going to, in his head, make a small adjustment. And we have a message from NT on HTV. Hi, Mark. If you told him to go back to the RST, that's the wrong answer. Is he using the RST? No, he's not using RST. Yeah, I think he is. He is using RST. Okay, so according to Mark, that's the wrong answer. The Envision Pearl looked better. What do you say about that? Yeah. Ducky just turned around. Oh. The thing to say the RST, the you RST say is not the ball three. I'm sorry, he's throwing a three. To so go back to the um, to the Pearl. That's what the, 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 the people were in. Oh! No, and then Dansbury oh! left the double, and that's the wrong one. That is not the double Dansbury wanted to see up there. There's a 7-10 split. So we, we, I'm sorry. If you if you can hear it in the background, they're playing "We Will Rock You" from Queen. And he Dansbury just got rocked. And, and he threw and he threw bedrock. <laughs> he threw dead rock. Let me slide this over here. And Dansbury is looking to make this. Oh, he almost made the spare. Almost made the spare, however, he did not make the spare, and he's down a quick 12 pins as we go into the third frame. We well, have a very nice try, Colette. I, I don't think I've seen a 7-10 conversion. I mean, I've seen one, but not on the UBA TV. I've seen plenty of them. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, we did have a 300. I was going to say, you were there for that, Alex Cavanero's 300. That was fun. I think the first UBA TV 300, if I'm not correct. Uh, no, there, there's been a couple, but... One live? Yeah. Oh, okay. But, and a big but here, that has not happened in a while. That may be the first one that's happened in a, in a team versus team match, though. So, that you may be correct on. Dansbury right now, that ball looks okay, and it is. Now, if Dansbury didn't do what he did, he would be up. However, he did, so he's down. So right now, Dansbury looking to figure out. He's looking at well. He's looking to re-rack 11. I'm not sure if he has to re-rack 11 because because right now Keith Perry's on 12. Eventually, they'll re-rack lane 11. Is there, is there an issue on lane 11? No, no pinage. Looking at, oh, there we go. Now Lean 11 is being re racked. Keith Perry right now has gone a strike spare. Looking for another strike here. He got it. Perry right now, both bowlers alternating strikes and spares. The difference is that red number that Dansbury put up in the second frame, which is an open Keith Perry spared, which is why Perry's up by 12 pence. Going into the fourth frame, this is game two for everybody that's starting to walk in the door. The champion, Keith Perry, is up one zip. Jonathan Dansbury is the challenger. Jonathan Dansbury of World Championship Series fame. He has held gold before in the form of a tag team. 
title twice, but he has not held a singles belt. And he has definitely not held the world heavyweight belt, and that's something that he's looking to do. I shouldn't say not the world, the Northeast heavyweight belt. And Perry right now doesn't want him to. Double from Perry. So that lead's going to stay at 12. It will grow bigger if Dansbury does not strike here. Dansbury's turn to respond, fourth frame, game two. I really am not biased, but I really do feel as though I am biased for this one. You can be a little bit biased. I'm, I'm not I'm, biased I mean, at all, but... I know, but I mean, for me, like, I mean, it's my man, like... It's, it's your boy. It's your dude. But, I mean, I gotta give... It's your buddy. Me and Dingo... It's your syndicate teammate. Me and Dingo, like, we're friends, too. We're friends, and too. There, there, there's that double. The double from Dansbury. There's that adjustment. Right now, still a 12-pin game. This was actually very close until the late stages of game one. This could promise to be close again. Right now, Dansbury on lane 11. This was the lane that he is continuing to strike on. So we'll see if he continues to do that. If he does, we'll stay at 12. That deficit, theoretically. You don't think he's gonna, I, I've seen that look. That look is, he's not gonna strike there. What are you talking about, Gordon? This is Dingle's, this is Dingle's good pair. I mean, good lane. That's his good lane. This is a good lane start. I mean, I'm, I'm expecting, if he does make a mistake, it might go flat 10, or mm -hmm. a late messenger on the 10, let's see. Let's see if Dingle makes a mistake here. That ball does not, all right. Well, in order for him to make a mistake to leave that, he's gotta hit the head pin, and he didn't do that. One, two, four. So, I, I don't, yeah. So I was joking around and calling this the Gavron the last time out for Nick Gavron. I had a goal. Because he, he missed the one, two, four. Dansbury, I do not think will do that, even though if he did, that means he Gavroned it. Sorry, Nick, love you. I had a uh, go off mic for that. You had to go mic off for a second to have a little visit. Yep. Let's see, looks like Dansbury will make the spare, and he does. Actually, there was a six over there, not a seven. My apologies. Dansbury right now, down by 14. It could be down by, actually he's up by 14, down by 16. It could be down by a lot more if Perry throws the next two strikes. Perry right now, up in the fifth frame. Looking to add to his lead. Now up by 16, looking to make this more. He does, three in a row for Perry. And that's been his good lane, lane 12. Lane 11 has been the lane that he's had some issues with. So if he has another issue, he'll give Dansbury a chance to get back into this. If it's another strike, Dansbury is going to be in trouble as we go into the second half of game two. It's still early for Dansbury. Still is early. I feel as though he's throwing a great ball. I think he's throwing the wrong ball. But in his head, this ball is going to give him more length down the lane with the angle that he's playing. Because if he puts a little bit more speed on the ball, the ball is just going right past the head that we saw in the last three. Bobby says to put some hand on the ball. He doesn't need any more hand unless you're referring to Dansbury. Four in a row for Keith Perry. Perry right now looking like he's starting to get logged in. And if you're looking at the face, that is the face of an intense bullet that goes, hmm, I think I got this. We gonna sizzle it. We gonna sizzle <laughs> You said it's early, and now all of a sudden you're singing the Sizzler song. What's up with that? Because you said there said he, like I was biting on you. You said there said he looked like he had he had the game locked. So I had to like give a little. Wait, right, right now jump. it does look like he has the game locked. Dansbury down by 26 at this point. He's got to start striking. He's going to be down by a lot more. Well, there's lane 12. He does have that one. Now he's got to figure out lane 11. Something that, as you said, he's been lined in on for the first game and a half. He's starting to not be lined in. I've got a uh, Mr. Morgan on the line. Let's go. I won't say that other word that should be in there. Let's friendly go. Yes, let's friendly go. They know. Let's fun go. Uh, I mean, I can play too. Let's french fry go. I mean, I'm, I'm trying. I like french fries. I'm, I'm, I'm losing weight. I mean, let's not talk about okay. fried food. Yeah, no fried food. Dansbury right now wants to F and go. Ah, uh, but he's not going to. That's a nine pin. Right now we have a stuck nine pin. Dansbury's trying to figure out 11. Keith Perry looks like he's figured out both. And if he does, this may be, let's put it this way, Dansbury's running out of frames. This may be the beginning of the end on game two on Jonathan. 
Because right now, Keith will be up by almost 40 at this point, and that's assuming that Dansbury gets a spare. Here comes a ball, looks like he's gonna get it, he does. So Dansbury right now trailing by a lot. And two more, fo two more strikes and it was definitely, ouch. That was definitely Malachi. Well, could be. I don't know. That's the face of the advocate just chiming in and sit there and telling him to sit there and do something different. Uh, which advocate would that be? Troy, Troy is sitting here. That would be Troy sending him messages? Yes. Well, would it, whatever message Troy sent him, it didn't work. If Troy sent uh, Keith Perry a message on how not to throw a strike, that did work. Tempin. No. He sat there and said, talking about there's a different bow out. He can't sit there and throw the ball like Troy is telling him to throw the ball. Garrett's getting the same messages. So he's over here telling him because Garrett is another house bowler. So they're talking amongst each other. I thought this was Dansbury's house. Isn't, isn't this is that what everybody's in, saying? All in, this is all in's house. house. Dansbury okay. also does league bowl here on Tuesday nights and Sunday morning subs, I believe. Got it. Where, where Chris Garrett so, uh, league bowls here on Sunday morning. Hence why they were already here. Already chatting. Yeah. Well, they're already chatting right now at this point. Let's see, both bowlers on spares going into the A3 and keep Perry up by 35. It, this one could have been over. I mean, it's close to being over anyway. Three straight marks from Keith with good count, and that will do it, and there's nothing Dansbury can do about it. However, Keith decides that he wants to open, give Dansbury a shot. There is opportunity. He's got three frames left. Let's see what Keith does and how Keith adjusts in his half of the eighth frame. We should say it's nice and smooth. That looks nice and smooth. Ball looks up. Perry's looking for it. Nope. Tempin. Well, that will keep Jonathan in this game, or at least a little bit here. So now the other issue is if Keith Perry opens, then all of a sudden he's got to start doubling instead of just sparing. And the Tempin is not very friendly for us righties in Bristol Pike. Well, it hasn't been giving anybody an issue yet. We'll give Keith an uh oh, now that I just said that. Now you're right, Tempin has been friendly to people in Bristol Pike. Dansbury missed one earlier. We we just now seen Keith miss it. It's ready. So right now, Dansbury's got a little bit of life left. However, he's got to get at least a mark here. Strike would almost certainly be preferable at this point. Because then at least he can start chopping this thing down to under 20. If he can get it under 20, double over here. He will force Keith to throw a double somewhere along the line and balk. Dansbury right now saying taking his time. It's okay. If he doesn't see something, if he doesn't feel something, he needs to reset. Because this is a big shot for him. A strike right now, a double over here, we'll put him under 20. And again, that, that forces Keith Perry to throw a double. Spare, spare. Spare, spare doesn't do anything here. Ducky was about to do something and I was about to clonk him over the head with the microphone on. If he did it. And, and, and just Jennifer went, no, 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 no. Dansbury right now, that ball looks good. And it is strike for Dansbury. He absolutely, yeah, sure. Spears sort of cuts it down a little bit by 10, but he really needed a strike there. He's got to put some pressure, and Garrett's yelling, yeah, double up. He's absolutely right. He really, in order to put any pressure on Perry, he's got to double up here. Again, a double forces Perry to, a double from Dansbury forces Keith Perry to double somewhere along the line, either ninth in the first ball in the 10th or marking the ninth and the first two in the 10th. Dan Perry can go out for a door for a 224. If Keith Dansbury doesn't double, the best he can do is 217. So this game is not over yet. However, here's a shot here. Dansbury's got to throw a strike. And he will not. That looks like a two pin. He's looking to beg. He's looking for the back pin. He's not getting either. So two pin up for Dansbury. Now all of a sudden, ball back in Keith Perry's court. Mark, Mark, Dansbury will effectively shut, will effectively be shut out. I mean, Dingle is still struggling on the left. Keith just now got into the transition on the 11. On the 11. So they're both going to probably be in the same boat. Dingle is a little bit far left. 
but again, that ball that he has in his hand, it gets down the lane, but it just has no real carry if he does not follow through with the shot. He, he'll come he'll come around the ball, the last two shots we've seen, he won 10 pins, because he also didn't finish through the shot. Um, hopefully a little small tweaking on this ball right here, we see 10 back in the pit. Ooh, yeah. We see a, a big split because he made the over adjusted. That's true. Dansbury really wanted that strike just because, as you said, Perry is adjusting. He may not be able to throw that double. Now he doesn't need to throw a double. He just needs Mark the ninth with, with count. Mark the tenth with count. He's good. He'll be up to Zeb. Anything less than that, and, and you don't want to give Dansbury a shot. Let's put it that way. You definitely don't want to give him a shot. Perry right now looking to not give him a shot. There's one. That's one mark. He comes in fourth of a strike. So here's the deal, Keith Perry, any mark and a four count on the fill, he will win. Anything less than that, and he may have given the game to Dansbury. Keep in mind again, he, Dansbury right now on lane 12 is all of a sudden lined in. So you don't want to give him a chance to win. First shot, don't have to worry about it. Makeable spare, don't have to worry about it. Ten pin, all of a sudden this becomes a sparing adventure. Yeah. 10 pin, 10 pin is the dark cloud right now. We do not want a 10 pin. But we do. Well, you, uh, well, if you're rooting for Dansbury, you want a 10 pin and his cousin the seven. Ooh. Oh, that ball's not good. Oh, he gets away with it. There was an ooh, and, and Ducky saw the same thing that I did, which was that ball squirted. However, that ball did not move. That ball stayed right in the pocket, and there you go. And. Uh, MT only CV. That's why that ball was the wrong answer. LOL. So maybe an unassisted shout out to uh, Mark over there. The people in the back is trying to figure out why I'm an official and still cheering. You can sit there and be play both sides of the world. Like you gotta sit there and play devil's advocate. Welcome to the world of politics. I mean, that ball was a lot better. That ball was good. Everybody liked that one better. And we got an oof from Molly Phillips. That was an oof. Right now, Keith Perry, that the game is now mathematically over. Dansbury's just going to finish out on that. Oh, you oh. got the last night, too. Okay. Oh, Every, everybody's got house of right and house of left. Um, got everything over there. Keith, Keith changed to, uh, to uh, Keith changed? The ball. To what ball? I did change to the pearl. Ah, uh, that looks very good. To so Keith Perry's finish. He needed a mark. Not only did he get one, he got three of them. Darren Dansbury right now can finish out with the 204. And looks like he may do that. That's going to put Dansbury into the deuces. Dango throwing pins. The people behind them is, is, is supporting. We might see a game three dingle. Well, you're going to have to see a game three dingle because if you don't, if you see a. I don't see a factor coming into a factor, but Dingle might sit there and like show up a little bit more this game. I mean, he showed good the first two games, except the first game he he gave it away at the, at the end of the first game. Second game, he sort of did that. And then that second frame, and he couldn't catch up. At the end of game two, Keith Perry, 237. Jonathan Dansbury, 203. Perry up to zip. And that's two. Let's keep. Let's go, says Joe Pax. And now here is our trivia question. As I said before, your topic, the UBA in the PBA. Here is your question. As I cue it up. So if you look, here's your question. If you look at the PBA, which UBA bowler, according to as of 2020, according to the stats of the PBA has a resume of 46 caches and six PBA titles, including winning the 2018 Tournament of Champions. And I remember that, and what you wrote on that cup is wrong. Again, what UBA Buller is a PBA resume of 46 caches and six PBA titles, including the 2018 Tournament of Champions. If you know that, write it up. If you're right, you get a $25 gift certificate. So, all right, here's a question. If you think you know, write it down. What? No, it is not Kyle Troop. What UBA bowler has a PBA resume of 46, of 46 caches and six UBA titles, including the 2018 Tournament of Champions? And it ain't Kyle Troop. 
and Keith Perry's writing it down, except Mark Culinary got you first, but I'll see if you're right. MT Unleashed ITV is correct with the answer. And that you are right also, Keith, but Mark got you there first. It is the OG, Matt O'Grady. He won the 2018 Tournament of Champions. I, I was at Majestic watching that match. So MT Unleashed, I, I believe that is Mark Culinary Jr. He's got it again. So congratulations. Answer, Matt O'Grady. Okay. Uh, if you follow us, <laughs> yes, it is you, MT on the TV. So anyways, uh, go over to the Instagram, give us your information over there, and we'll make sure that we give you the stuff, I believe, right, Instagram? You'll be able on Instagram. So we'll do, we'll do another one. You guys got it relatively quickly, so we'll do another one after game three. Do another trivia question. So it is me, yes it is. So anyway, we're gonna start here. Dansbury right now is, well, you left the Nixon up there, that's a four, six, seven, ten. You gotta zoom in when he's doing that. You gotta work. That's the I, it, it zoomed in, it zoomed in. <laughs> What's also zoomed in is, is yeah. Not when he walked over the ball, he walked over and go get on the other lane. But that is not the right ball. If that ball fizzled out at the arrows, just like the other one did before him. He needs to get the ball like down the lane a little bit further and have a little bit more turn. But he's legit in my head throwing a ball like me, which is short. But then go ahead, like he doesn't really have that much force behind the ball to begin with. All right now, and Bobby Phillips put it up. That would be the Nixon, Bobby. And right now, Keith is looking for a double, but not the double four. He's looking for a double X, and there it is. Keith Perry with a double starting off game three. And Dansbury with another strike here. It could be as far down as 36 pins very quickly. And whereas Keith Perry has been a little bit, um, shall we say, generous at the end of game two. I don't think his generosity is going to last to the end of game three. No, like, it's getting early. I'm sorry, it's getting late. Getting later. Start, yeah, it's starting, it's starting to get a little hungry. I mean, at least we could still make the 7 o'clock reservation. Definitely can make the 7 o'clock <laughs> reservation. He's trying to make it there earlier for you. Three in a row for Keith Perry. So, anyways, this is a 3 0 for Perry Dansbury right now. Try, trying to look for answers at this point. And, and right now, Dansbury doesn't have any. The only answer may be can he, or the only question Dansbury may have if he continues this is will he be joining uh, Ducky and Keith over at the um, meat buffet? Oh! Oh, so it's not what? a meat buffet. Well, what sort of buffet is it? It's a meat buffet, but it's not a meat it buffet. It is a meat buffet. <laughs> Okay, what a meat and vegetable buffet with a salad and so so it's a okay. It's got a, It's an all-you-can-eat meat buffet with a salad bar. Yeah, but I mean, and fruit. Yeah, but I mean and meat. There's, there's like the way you say it, like it sounds very like. But they come out and they come out and scoop with skewers. Bobby Phillips wants rodizio. Is it anything like rodizio? Yes, rodizio. That's what we're talking. That's what we're talking about. Okay, so going to rodizio. Yes, I have. It's really good. Just like that. Okay. Okay. Jersey, my favorite one is a Troy Pamardisi over in Hackensack. That's really good. And I want to go up to that, and there's a burger spot up, up that way, but I need to get to a tournament up in that way. But I had to sit there and go with the right people to sit there and go and enjoy this. I can't get my local fat people to drive two hours to Lodi to go in a tournament and then go out and eat dinner afterwards. Well, what? There you go. Well, dance very real. <laughs> <laughs> well, then do it before the Lodi tournament. But what Dansbury wanted to see and he finally got was a double. Dansbury right now only down by 36, but could be down by less if Keith stops striking. Of course, that is a tall order because Keith, Keith Perry right now, he starts game one, 265, game two, 237. He doesn't seem like he wants to stop striking. He, he can do this all day. He's just going to keep praying and throwing the ball. Here's another one. 
Well, let's see if he's right. He is. There's another one. Four in a row for Perry. As you go into the fifth frame, you're right. Perry does not want to miss that appointment. He's hungry. He wants. He he missed out on Mega Bowl. He does not want to sit there and miss out on Battle Bowl. It's going to be a tough road for anyone from now to get to there. So May's match, June's match, maybe double June. Because, I mean, when I had the belt, I had to do a double June right. contenders beforehand. But theoretically, two more matches, he's in. Two Battle Bowl, possibly three. He already sat there and, and, and wants that just so he can have a shot. Has he, has he ever gotten to Hefts? Because Hefts is really good. And we'll see right now. Five in a row, yes. Has he ever gone to Hef's? It's a seafood place. It's really good. Going where? Hef's. It's a seafood place. It's really good. Do you know what I'm talking about? No. Okay. No. <laughs> Ducky does not eat seafood. No. I mean, and Keith, and Keith he likes Rodizio. You know, Keith doesn't eat steak. You, you're going to Rodizio and you're not want steak. We went, no, no, it was, it, like, okay. Reduzio was just here. We would have bought him a cheeseburger and just snuck it in in a purse. <laughs> okay, he would have been all right with a snuck in cheeseburger. Yeah, they do. They definitely have cheeky have chicken and yes, chicken and bacon. Oh, oh my goodness. And the nine pin wants some just desserts. This is that, that glaze nine, nine pin does not want to go to Rodizio. That glazed pineapple is on point. Yeah. Glazed pineapple is very on point. <laughs> That's what a pineapple pin. It's a glazed pineapple pin up there. Listen, I do got a pen. <clears throat> Pineapple pen. <laughs> I, I, re I remember that too. It's something that I wanted to forget. And I remember it now. Thanks, Ducky. All right, Dansbury's looking to make the spare anyway. So Jonathan right now may have five frames worth of practice time at this moment. Dansbury right now with a 93 in the fifth frame. And he's down potentially by 57 pins. As we go into the second half of game three, Keith Perry already up to zip, looking to be up three zip. And, and you said you, you got that appointment at seven o'clock. Bobby Phillips wants some Rodizio. I didn't make the reservation yet. I mean, once Keith gets into game four, then we'll sit there and call and see who wants make, to go. Make a reservation for Bobby Phillips. He wants to go. I mean, Bobby can come. He probably, Bobby, does, you can come. He probably does live right around the corner because, I mean, he's local. He both is. Far away, so. He does. Why not that far? Well, there's another one from Dansbury. However, Dansbury is... It's going to take us at least 40 minutes to get there, so... That's true. <laughs> and, and here's the issue right now. Dansbury's got three strikes, which is half of what Keith Perry has in the sixth frame. You see, this is, I didn't say in a row. I just said he has three strikes. I thought, I thought you, you got distracted by the red thing in the back. I, no, I'm, I'm distracted right now by the fact that Keith's got the front five at this moment, looking for the front half. No distraction needed here, no Tempin. Oh, I would have, if, if he would have gone all the way, maybe we could have done like a little Rodizio, free Rodizio gift card or something, but he didn't. I probably would have, but he didn't, so I don't have to worry about it. I mean, I would have bought it off of him. Ah. I'm trying to buy the ball that Dan Brady ain't gonna need after this. Well, wait, which ball would that be? The MV tour. If, if, if he doesn't break it. <laughs> well, there, there, there is a graveyard right next to here, which I'm sure there's been plenty of bowling equipment that's been buried there. <laughs> Curry will make the spare. How many times have I have not thought about making a dis uh, uh, deposit? May make a deposit in the graveyard. So anyway, for everybody that, that's here right now, th this has been a very one-sided affair. We have played two games. We're in the middle of the third one. Keith Perry's taking the first two, and he's up by at least 36 going into the seventh frame. And I say that because Dansbury can go out the door for a 243. Usually, that would be a winning score, but not against a 279, which is what Perry right now could be going for at this moment. All right, seventh frame. Perry's ball up right. Oh, he squirted that one out a little bit. He gets away with it. Not the same... Not the same angle or arc that he's done, but right now it doesn't matter. Youth over length every time. Very much so. You know I like. View over length at any time. That dark cloud, dark cloud, dark cloud. You knew I wasn't gonna go all the way because dark clouds here. <laughs> He's the black cloud. No, dark cloud. 
get the nickname right. And Dark Cloud for everybody. Dan, 10 pin for Dansbury. So, well, no 243 for Dansbury. Still have a potential for 279 for Keith Perry. TikTok. TikTok. Now let's see if he can do something that Keith Perry hasn't been able to do, and that's make the 10 pin, and he did, even though Perry just made it. Does, does Dansbury lose it on camera? No. I do not think he will lose it on camera. I hope so, too. For, for, for the sake? For the sake of the children. I mean, not only and the seven and, and the over 100 people between people on and off is, uh, oh, maybe he will. Frustration is not good. You might have to cut the live feed a little bit. You might have to stream the, the, the stream, stream, the, stream the rest of it on streamer. <laughs> move, move the camera away. Hide the children from the gratuitous violence. We well, just gotta. Uh, well, you're never out of it until you lose four games. This is still game three, so obviously he hasn't lost four games. So it's just a matter. I mean, we've both. I know I personally. Uh, well, no, it's a four-seven. I'm sorry, six-ten. Again, I'm looking this on the, this on the reverse. Yeah, backwards. So, but again, this is, I've come down, I've come back from being down 03. You come back from being down 03. It is possible to come back from being down 03. Yeah, it's not easy. Being down 03 in your own house, it's, it's more of a heartbreak. Well, I guess the other question, uh, well, that doesn't help. Well, he did get the 10 pin, he left the 6. So, even though the question now becomes how bad would it be if you get swept in your own home house? Yipes. So, anyways. So, meanwhile, I'm going to give Ducky the microphone for one quick second here. While I get, while I verify some facts for the next trivia question. Okay. Keith Perry holds up with a four pin. Let's go read some comments. Yeah, we, we're talking about that. We're looking at Rodizio. That's the last comment, too. That was. So potentially, I got to figure out who is going to be the May's uh, opponent. I had Fishy April 29th after tour stop at Laurel Lanes. So hopefully that's a good one for me. So Keith, I want the belt off of him, nobody else. <laughs> but I don't think that's going to happen. Hold on the belt. Wait for me. Wait for me. I'll get the belt. Yeah, baby Huey. Baby Huey's been 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 needed a diaper change ever since I lost it. Hey, hey love tap, love tap on the on the ninth frame. Dingo sitting there waving it off. Post interview coming up after this. What up, Malachi? How are you? Oh, shout out to Malachi. How's the car doing? That's the question. Malachi said he was gonna come up here. Uh, except uh, he didn't. Malachi, keep hearing through them. So right, right now, yeah, that, that is correct. Keith Perry is up to zip. And mathematically right now, it's gonna be three zip. Dansbury is looking to make the spare here, which he will. So best Dansbury can do is 190. Keith Perry already has a 199. So uh, yeah, Malachi said that's what I thought it would be. Well, if you thought it, it's correct. Listen. Malachi needs a mechanic right now. He's not the only person that needs a mechanic. Well, then there's two different things. Let's, let's start with the first thing. No one thought anything was going to happen like this. Everybody can be beat at any given moment in time. Absolutely. Keith just has a little bit more, um, a little bit more area to play with with his speed. Where Dansbury is moving left and left and left, but he's still literally throwing the ball like out to the to the dirt and hoping for the ball to turn. And if he just misses his mark or misses the area that he wants at any point in time, that just gets past the head. And right now, Perry looking at a 259. 
and there's no reason why he's not going to be able to get it. He's on lane 12. His issues, the one open that he's had and the couple of lone 10 pins that he's had, has been on lane 11. Right now he's on lane 12. I expect to see that 259 show up. Dansbury right now going out for 190. He, there are a bunch of Dansbury fans here. They've been very quiet because right now there's really been nothing to be loud about. Dansbury, like I said, like I said, the base, the baseball is skidding out of him. He's not even coming back on him. Where he's sitting here, he's just throwing. I don't even know what the ball he's throwing, to be honest with you. It looks like the one. Nope. Well, whatever, whatever ball his, whatever ball he is throwing, he needs to use another one. No, he's th he changed this ball in the 10th frame. He just right. told the ball right. Like, he's so far left, he's literally throwing the ball out, and it has to. Just, it doesn't have enough in the back because he loses it on the lane, the, the, the distance. He needs to shorten his, the look. The ball will give a little bit more turn, and then hopefully. Thank you. Well, you're, you're asking what the ball is. That's a Zed. For anybody that's wondering what ball that is that Dansbury is using, that is a Zed. And right now, that's what Dansbury needs at this moment. At the end of game three, Keith Perry, 259. Jonathan Dansbury, 186. Uh, Keith Perry is up three games to zero. And uh, Dansbury almost certainly does not want me to say this about him, but the margin of error is zero. And in the words of Jonathan Dansbury, who coined this phrase, El Chipo. I did coin the... Uh, Margin of error zero, and right now that's what it is. Dansbury will be starting game four. While that's going on, here's trivia question number two. I'm going to stay with the same category, UBA and PBA. And now let's put up this person's stats. So right now, and again as of 2020, 58 total caches, four PBA titles, and let me let me give you a hint here is one of them. Uh, he defeated Dick Allen in the Cheetah Championship. That's a UBA bowler. Very emotional moment. Let's see who knows it. Game four, Dingle starts off. Did he, did he, does he keep the transition going? We'll find out. All right, let's see who did that. I will be giving clues if it goes to a game five, or if it's there and nobody, everybody's thinking, hmm, who did that? And five pin. Now, if you've just been joining us, then there's almost 100 people here right now. PBA Custom, if you miss a five pin, you get powdered. And we do have a winner. Tiffany Smalls is absolutely right. We will get to that momentarily. Tiffany Smalls is correct. Yeah, in a hot minute. Uh, also one of the great moments in the UBA, and I'll get to that, but first, let's see if Jonathan Dansbury is going to get powdered. I don't think he's going to get powdered. Oh, my goodness. Woo! We almost had an infamous, infamous moment. Im infamous. All-in moment. Yeah, we almost had an all-in infamous moment in UBA history. But Tiffany Smalls is correct. The answer is Anthony Pepe. So congratulations to Tiffany. Go on our Instagram and we will get you your $25 gift certificate. So again, Instagram, UBA Bowling, please give us your info. We'll get back over there. But yeah, Anthony Pepe defeating Dick Allen in the PBA Cheetah, Cheetah Championships. Once upon a time. What? And right now, Keith Perry starting off with a strike and it looks very familiar what we see in the first three games. Okay, thank you, Donkey. I'm sorry, I, so, was, I was listening to Dan. So, Malachi is saying, is it down and in-house? What? I was listening to Dan Bray Meltdown. Apparently, he has to talk to me afterwards. Oh, he has to talk to you afterwards? Yeah, I don't know. Okay. Well, it's down and in-house. He needs to go, Malachi says, he needs to go up 12, down to 7, into the pocket. That's what Malachi says. The 190 bowler. Well, it says the former cruiserweight champion, so he's better than a 190 bowler. However, right now, if Keith Perry does that, it doesn't matter what anybody does. Perry again, front two. He may try to complete here what he did not complete the last game. Even though he did say, well, I'm not going to shoot the 300 dark clouds here. So we'll see, see what happens over there. So yeah, a number of UBA bowlers throughout the years have, have made their mark in the PBA. And you've had great bowlers like Kyle Troop, like Anthony Pepe, like others start in the UBA. 
And of course, Michael Mort Michael Martell almost winning another PBA title, almost winning another UB PBA title for the UBA. I I don't know much about bowling or anything like that because I really don't watch bowling on TV. But congratulations to AJ. I'm assuming he did something this past weekend. I seen somebody uh, posted that he won the ch championship. I do not know which championship it was or anything like that, but AJ won his first major title, who's also, uh, I think he's a Kingsman maybe, even. Uh, yeah, he, talk, AJ Westerholm, you talking yeah. about? Yeah. yeah, congratulations to AJ. Again, we, you know, we may not get the press, but we do like winning the titles. And speaking of which, Jonathan Dansbury coming out right now, looking to win another title in his collection. Dansbury with a double. Maybe he's starting to get his act together here, over here in game four, and he needs to. Right now, only down 10, and he won't be down anything if Keith Perry does not strike. So right now, for those who are coming in here, this is game four, and right now, uh, AJ won the ISC. Thank you. Thank you, Chris Downs. Keith right now looking for three. He's got it. Three in a row for Keith Perry, and here we go again. This is game four. John, there's four games left. Jonathan Dansbury must win them all. One loss from him, and Perry will retain the title. Going into the fourth frame right now, sort of looking like the beginning of game one where both bowlers were lined in. Well, not for nothing. Those, those bucket hats look kind of nice. I'm going to have to get me a Philly bucket hat now. That is a silly bucket hat. So, uh, by the way, AJ won the 2023 ISC Collegiate Championship this morning in Vegas. So I knew, I knew, I knew he won something somewhere, and that, that ball wasn't coming in regardless. Let's see what we got over here. That looks like a two-pin. And it is. So right now, Perry with the first non-strike from him this game, and now John Dansbury has a chance to take the lead. It would not be his first one. However, it would be one, we'll see if he can retain it. Perry right now looks to make the spare, he will. So Dansbury has a chance right now to take the lead. He at least had his chance to even it up. If not take the lead by a scant one pin, but still, that's a lead. Only need to win a game by one pin. You don't, it doesn't need to be pretty. You don't have to, to win by 60 pins. You only need to win by one. The amount of wood does not matter in these matches. It's only game counts. Dansbury right now, fourth frame. He doesn't like that shot, and he's the reason why he didn't like it. That ball floated over, six pin. So right now, Dansbury cannot take advantage of the non-strike spare, and it will stay a 10-pin game. 279, 269 max? Yeah. 279, 279 max. Oh, 279, 269 max, correct. I meant to say that. I inadvertently did not. That is assuming that Dansbury makes a spare and ooh. Sketchy, 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 sketchy. Well, you got to remember he missed a six pin already on, uh, in the last game. And keep in mind, the, the game was over at that point anyway, but still, you don't want to be missing spares. You'd rather be making strikes. I'm assuming that's Malachi, right? Uh, you assume in there, yes. You assume correctly. Assume Malachi. Yes. Yep. Yes, he changes his angle. But I don't think it's angle for Dansbury. I think it's pretty much the ball is losing. Well, there's Dansbury right now. That ball looks good. That was that was a nice one. Like, on that angle right there, he's fine. With throwing the ball in right there, he's fine right there. But in the beginning, his angle was so far off that, or I should say he was so far right, that he was just skidding past the hip pin because of Keith's rev rate or, and or the angle that keeps coming in. But now, Dansbury is sat there and... and, and Metal down a little bit. We could sit there and see a little. Well, a little bit more. Angle's got a complete. I'm sorry, Angle's got a completely. Dansbury's got a completely different angle now. And so if Perry doesn't keep striking, Dansbury, if he figures it out, could could make a run here. That being said, there's another strike from Perry. Perry right now. Strike, 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 nine spare. You can go off for 279, as you said earlier. Dansbury can go off for 269. Oh, I'm so glad this is this game. To be here, I mean, you guys at home watching this in the comfort of your home. Hopefully We're sitting here from the comfort of Bristol Pike. Lots, lots to do over here after the match. You've got a Rodizio. There's, there's a casino pretty close, close by here. I don't know what. Are we gonna go Uh oh. 
Oh, he gets it anyway. Yeah, how's the left, how's the right, how's the middle? It doesn't really matter at this point. Perry right now with another double. Spray, yeah, that's right, spray and pray. <laughs> he, he pointed to it, I'll just comment it out there. That that was prayers answered at this moment. And I think all the answer he can do right now is sit, sit there and figure out and go, what the heck, what, what can I do here? We're gonna have to come up with a prayer now. Well, Dansbury right now, he's not out of this. He's only down by 10 pins. Again, strikes here is only down by by 10. So he tries to get in the seventh. He's going to force Keith Perry to keep it going. You know, you can't you can't play defeated at this moment. There's still plenty of game left to go. With a halfway mark of game four, you're only down 10 pins. Dingle is so... It may seem like you're down 1,000, but you're only down 10 pins. Dingle is so mad. Like, there's no reason to be mad. It's just bowling. Like, we can sit there like... He will be he will be really mad if I win my match and he falls down and he gets to lose again next month against me. Cause if I bowl Jansbury, come on out, mic me up, let me be mic up on while I'm bowling. Oh, I'm 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 not sure that we can handle that. I think the equipment I think the equipment would explode. If you guys, okay. You guys, See, look at Keith's face when you just said that Keith went, no, 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 no. If you guys can't do it, I will... No, the camera, there'll be smoke coming out of the camera. That will explode. <laughs> the, this, it'll, it'll be like sizzling like a gremlin may pop out of there if we do that with, with you coming out there. And Malachi said, are you going to bowl him at Bristol? I don't know. Are you going to bowl him at Bristol? No, I'll bowl Dansbury at Westbrook. <laughs> All right. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure Dansbury would rather kill himself at this point. Yeah. So, 3 0 for Dansbury. Again, Dansbury is only down by 10 pins at this moment. So, once again, same, same situation here for Keith Perry. Strike, he keeps his lead. If he doesn't strike you, Dansbury can take the lead. And we don't have many frames left to go in game four. We don't. Like, if we don't have enough number of frames, um, Dingle has figured it out a little too late, but maybe still a little too early. I mean, he might sit there and get this one out, out the way and get the jitters and everything. Oh, now all of a sudden, this makes life a little bit more interesting. There's a 10-pin. All of a sudden, Jonathan Dansbury can take a lead here going into the eighth frame. Theoretically, he's got the lead. Now let's see if he can get his head out of his tuckus. I will bowl Dingo at, at Bristol. I have no problem bowling anybody here at Bristol. But I was just sitting there saying that me and Dansbury have unfinished business because we, me and Dansbury bowled at rankings match at Westbrook. We had a WCS match at Westbrook. He done lost his match to Keith at Westbrook prior to Keith coming up to get the belt. Like, it's, it's all fun. Well, that's how Keith Perry makes this pair. He will. So right now, theoretically, Dansbury is up by 11 as we go into the eighth frame. So right now, both bowlers, and I say that theoretically, technically he's up by one. A double puts him up by 11. And it's now Perry that needs to recycle the pins. So once again, this is this is game four. This is a game Jonathan Dansbury needs. Right now, Jonathan Dansbury, if he goes out the door, will win the game and we will go to a game five. Now the question is how much health does Keith Perry want to give Jonathan Dansbury? Dansbury at this point, if he goes out the door, 269. Excuse me, sir, my ask okay. take the mic real quick. So, um, Mr. President, Ms. Ma Mr. Malachi Moore has just said he would like to do an expedition at expedition, Bristol. not an expedition. Expedition. So mass destruction. He still owes me. He still owes me the bet from calm last down, time. Calm down. Calm down. You got some microphone. You don't got to talk loud. Absolutely. We'll figure it out, Malachi. No problem. Let's get past Lebanon That's first. Good, Malachi. We'll, we'll figure it out. Now, now that Keith has re-racked, we'll go back over to the action with Keith Perry. Eighth frame right now, game four. dansbury has got to have this one right now. He's got it. Oh, sorry, me and oh, sorry, Malachi, me versus you. Oh, I thought you were talking about team versus team. Yeah, I, I mean, I'll pull you here, no problem. All right, Perry, right now, there's a ball coming in, there's a strike. I, I see you. It was a joke. So, I, I said see it you was a joke Wednesday. before I said it. I, I, I think you made Jonathan mad. You don't want to make the bowlers mad. What did, what did you don't say? make the bowlers I angry. Listen, I, I, was I said it was a joke too. before I said it. Oh, Jennifer. <laughs> Jennifer, Jennifer, Jennifer. Wait, did you just say Jennifer? <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Live mic, go away. Jonathan Dansbury right now, eighth frame. Coming up, looking to make it by 11 pins with the strike. He gets it. 
Right, right now we're swinging it the other way. Dansbury goes out, it's still 269. Keith Perry goes out the door, it's a 258. And, and all of a sudden, you, you, you had a very frustrated Jonathan Dansbury looking to pack it up. All of a sudden, he's back. And, and you're right, we have Dansbury's serious face. And you're also right, well, I actually know when he gets married, angry, sometimes he'll lose focus, sometimes he'll gain it. I know with me, you never want to get me angry because then all of a sudden, I will be very, very focused. Ninth frame coming up here, big shot for Dansbury. Ooh. Three, four, six, seven, ten. And yipes. He went from being ahead to now being in serious trouble of being knocked out of this match. <laughs> Needless to say, Dansbury has to make this. So maybe he does. He's going to give it a run. That ball did not come up, though, only got two. So now here's what that means. Dansbury's got a 198. Best that Dansbury can do right now is a 228. Perry right now, if he goes, actually if he goes Dutch, that's a 228 also. So theoretically a tie. If Keith doubles here in the ninth frame, he will have the lead going into 10th and they don't just need a mark. So big shot here for Perry. So right now, does he have the correct adjustment? And I, it's still dark cloud. And I travel. I'm not just North Jersey. I travel all over the place. Big shot here for Perry. And no. Oh, that, that almost went all over the place also. He almost left a whole bunch of garbage. In this case, only the 10-pin. Ty still technically intact at this moment. According to so. Bristol, they don't sleep around here, so I can't get a broom. Well, I, well right now, this... Yeah, you're talking sweeps. It's not technically a sweep yet. No, 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 I'm just saying, like, I was just talking. You said we don't sweep the floor. No, I, I, I think if you tried to do that at this moment in front of Jonathan Dansbury, he may make you eat the broom. That's with, fine. Without ketchup. That's fine. May, maybe with a little bit of... I um, in my mouth before falls. Well, I, I I'm not sure. <laughs> I mean, just... I mean... Uh, Malachi says you're too much. Yo. So I was going to say, I've, I've been all over the place. Never too much, never too much, never too much. Now, before we go to that point, I know I'll give, it, I'll, give you, I'll give you a chance. I'll give you a chance, Ducky, but let's go to the 10th frame here. Here's the situation. If Keith Perry strikes twice, it is game, set, match. Jonathan Dansbury is done. The game is over. If he does not strike on this shot and Dansbury strikes out, Dansbury wins, and we get to a game five. If Keith strikes, does not strike in the second ball and gets a spare, we can have a tie. So all sorts of, we have all three factors in play right now. Perry right now looking for the strike. That's one, seven pin goes down. So here's the situation, strike matches over, spare potential tie. If he opens and does not get it, Jonathan Dansbury can still strike out and win. So you got all three factors in play right now, Ducky. What do you think happens? Let's get a Ducky prediction very quickly. Learn how to divide. If there's all factors, you need a little division to multiply. Always do a division before you multiply. Now Kai says it's over. I mean, hypothetically it is, but let's finish the game. Well, need a strike here. One more strike, it is over. That's game, set, match. That ball's got to hurry. And it does not. Not only is not only does he not get the strike, if he does not make the spare and Dansbury goes out, Dansbury wins. Even if Keith converts the spare, Dansbury can still go out and tie. Jonathan can go out for 228. Correct. He's gonna go out for It'll either be 228 or 227. 227. Gave it a run. So here's the deal. Well, he's, he's done as much as he possibly could at this point. Dansbury needs all three. Strike, strike, strike. He wins. Strike, strike, nine. He ties. Anything less than that, that is game and match. Dansbury, first ball. It's got to be a strike. And it is not, and that is the match. 
at the end of game four, and it doesn't matter how Dansbury goes at this point. Keith Perry, 227. Jonathan Dansbury, less than that. Keith Perry's going to win for zip and retain the title. And 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 I, I believe uh, Ducky may wind up eating the phone or eating the megaphone. Well, it was a four-game match, however, and a big however here. That was a very close four-game match. Uh, yeah, not it did not go as planned, but I'm just glad to come out with the win. I mean, he's good, but unfortunately, I'm better. That's why I'm the champ, still the champ. Looking forward to who's next. Well, we'll see who's next. Ducky thinks that it could be him in a couple of months. So what's going to happen if you have to face your buddy over there? He's another name on the list. I'm going to treat him the same way as I treat anybody else. Just another competitor. Doesn't matter. Let's go to the end of game four. Over there, a strike. You're thinking, I had this, and then all of, all of a sudden, you almost didn't. What was going on? Uh, yeah, that second shot in the 10th, I rushed up to the line, just out of whack. Made an average shot, split. Thought I picked it up, but I knew he needed to at least double and nine to win. But some people can't handle the pressure. Unfortunately. That's why it's the UBA. Now, uh, next question for you. Well, for, first of all, next question for you. You ready to go back to Battle Bowl, or in this case, ready to go back to see North versus South? Yes. I unfortunately missed out in March because I was in Florida, but hopefully I can make it down there in August. Uh, any last segments, last thoughts, anything like that? Any shout outs? No, just heavyweight Northeast. Come get it. I'm still waiting on comp competition here.